Yeah. That is a fluoridated HA. Mm-hmm. Fluoridated HA. Since Joe started me on this, I'll just give you guys a testimonial. He started me on this stuff about, uh, oh, gee, it must have been 10 years ago. I'll tell you, started me on this. The first time I lectured was 10, over 10 years ago. I first lectured. It's, a, it's the most amazing thing you can imagine. I, we're now grafting, doing all our grafting using at least 50% of this material. But if you're grafting um, like a failing implant, or say if you've got um, doing a periapical uh, surgery and you want to fill a bone defect, so you can use the fluoridate HA for that. And there's things that we've been doing for several years now with no, not one reinfection once we put this in there, not one. And we're, like, we just started grafting the custom endosteal, the subberiosteals in this year. So far, I haven't seen any of those develop an infection yet, the initial. And of the, the custom endosteal implants, the reason the subperiosteals had problems is because the type of patient that needed them lost their teeth because of periodontal disease. And now we know about the spores. So you're opening it up and you're putting that implant into a an area that's vulnerable, and that's what the that's why it got a bad rap. So now, but now we understand. So now we need to do something to inhibit. And damn, the fluoride thing was right there, and it it works. It really works. Using reagent grade sodium fluoride, and just use a little scoop, and you just see the scoop is there, and we're just going to add sterile water. And I add approximately enough to get a saturated solution, which is about 4.4%. Because we still have a little bit of fluoride dissolved there. And this doesn't have to be exact. But if you want to measure out exactly 4.4 mil, um, grams to 10 milliliters uh, of water, you can. But this is, we still have a little bit, so I know I've got at least a saturated solution. So. I'm going to be using calcitite, and that is kind of going to be the body of the graft. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to mix this 50-50 with oxygen, which is a pure crystalline HA, and we're going to fluoridate both of them together. So this is a half a gram of just dense HA which we're going to pour in. And now bring me the oxygen. And we're going to probably just match that volume, so we end up with about a gram. This is oxygen. Okay, and we're just going to match the volume. And then I just sit and I mix that together with this concentrated fluoride solution for about two minutes. And what happens is you get a nano layer of floral apatite on the microcrystals of, of apatite. And it forms like a nanotube around the floral, around the uh, hydroxyl appetite. And when we say hydroxyl appetite, we mean that the hydroxyl on the appetite is available for substitution with fluoride. When we have dense HA, you don't get as much substitution because there's not as many, much hydroxyl. And usually the dense HA is called hydroxyapatite compared to resorbable HA, which is called hydroxyl appetite. So there's a hydroxyl available for substitution. So then we get done with it, we just kind of shake it down into the corner like this, and I take a small suction and just suction up the excess. And then I just take sterile water and wash it. And then shake it down to the bottom. And then I suck off the excess. I do that three times. And that washes out any of the free fluoride that might still be lingering in that solution. Because the only thing I want is the fluoride that's tied up with the appetite. And I don't want any free fluoride in my graft. So now that's washed three times. And now that's ready to graft. Or if you're going to do a large graft and you want to use PRP, now this is ready for your PRP. 
This is some of the work we did in Japan. The first slide shows a comparison of hydroxyapatite uh, compared to the fluoridated HA. Uh, this is just the pure oxygen and doesn't have the, the dense HA as we showed you how to make the mixture of the both, but just pure uh, hydroxyapatite fluoridated. But this shows uh, that it is apatite and that the uh, reaction procedure does have an uh, effect of purifying the HA into a more pure HA. Some of the monocyte is removed out of this mixture during their process, making it a more pure compound. The two arrows indicate the, uh, the two peaks that are missing uh, com uh, with the HA compared to the fluoroapatite, which means that we did eliminate some of the monocyte uh, that's in the mixture. This array shows on the left the pure HA prior to the fluoride reaction and on the right it's the HA or the fluoridated HA and you can see that it has a more pure x-ray defaction pattern showing that we did eliminate some of the impurities in the original oxygen. This shows a scan electron micrograph of the oxygen surface compared to the fluoridated oxygen surface doesn't show a lot except that you can see some surface modification. This slide actually shows the FDX analysis. It shows fluoride that's actually uh, present on the surface of the HA uh, crystal. On the right, uh, the green circle shows the peak of the fluoride and on the left, uh, the red circle shows the absence of the fluoride, which shows that there is fluoride uh, produced in this reaction. And this is just a summary of the FDX analysis. On the left, you see pure HA. On the right, you see the fluoridate HA. And you can see the difference that this made on the surface of the HA. This, this uh, concept called implant brace I told you about is we're transferring the technology of custom implant to orthopedics. We're doing that research in Japan. Okay, and what we did is we took dogs, extracted teeth, did CAT scan, CAT scan general models, and this is the custom endosio. We did several dogs using this. And the purpose was that we wanted to find out the toxicity of fluoroapatite coated HA compared to control HA. So we made two um, custom endosio implants, one for the right and one for the left, and we grafted um, on the right, fluoroapatite or fluoridate HA, and on the left, we use control HA in and around this custom endosio implant. And then we sacrificed the dogs four months later to see the difference in the histology. The remarkable results showed that the right side fluoroapatite and the left side control HA integrated and was incorporated in bone in exactly the same fashion. This is titanium. And we just basically wanted to show the osseous integration potential of this implant, which we showed, okay? It osseous integrates to the HA coating, which will do any HA coating to any, you know, whatever metal you got treated with HA, it'll, you know, osseous integrate to it. And here's the osseous integration that we showed. This concept is the implant brace. And we did two different dog studies. And one, we wanted to show whether this this configuration cage, <clears throat> we were taking block sections out of the jaw and then filling that up with augmentation and screwing that in. But before we screw it in, we fractured the jaw. And we wanted to see if we could, number one, reduce a fracture with it, and number two, if we could graft large sections. Well, the first round of dogs, it reduced the fracture, but we had infection get into the cage and basically we didn't get any bone growth inside the cage. So we went to our second round of dogs and this re the second round of dogs uh, r rather because we knew we could reduce a fracture with it very easily but we still wanted to test the ability to replace block sections with grafting material. So this one here we did we did two dog studies. I don't know if I have, no I just have the one. We did two dog studies. One, on one side we did just autogenous. We took the block graft out and crushed it all up, put it in the cage, cemented, or screwed it in, covered it up, 